between Christ and Freud, how many kinds of abstinence are there? Part two of two, we continue from part one. In order to put a firm end to fantasy, the Christian Orthodox ascetic tradition, unlike the Catholic one, forbids any attempt to imagine even the apparently divine subjects like the Judgment Day, Christ on the throne or Christ hanging on the cross. Quote, he who sees nothing when he prays sees God, end quote, said St. Simeon, the new theologian. Through this incessant practice, by the participation of the Holy Spirit, the ascetic comes to the point of not having even dreams anymore, which means he is able to control even the subconscious motions during sleep. It's clear then why such a man controls very easily the brutal impulses of bodily lust, cutting them off completely. The struggle with the passions is not done at random and not everybody is successful. On the contrary, very few even among monks reach the heights described above. We're talking about uh, this passion, apathia in Greek, not having passions. The ascetic is, first of all, an expert of the human soul, a great psychologist and even psychiatrist. In order to attain to this knowledge, he studies the treatises of astonishing precision of his predecessors, the fathers of the church, which are included in the Philokalia, the Encyclopedia of Monastic Living, and in other works. Therefore, no ignorant novice can penetrate and especially maintain himself in this dangerous space of virginity for Christ. Fact proven by the many cases of insanity in which fall those trying to achieve it without knowledgeable guides, mostly laymen, who attempt to imitate monks after reading, without proper spiritual guidance, the many books available today. Indeed, among them, are there are many in sorrows, cruelly tormented by melancholy and irritability, which are inevitable fruits of the passion of lust. But this does not occur because virginity is impossible, but because they practice it wrongly, praying incorrectly and proudly, thinking that they are achieving something great. Therefore, God takes away his grace, without which we can do nothing. John 15, 5. Leaving man by himself, with his wretched weapons against the irrational fury of this monstrous passion. Man cannot stand by himself against this unleashed ocean. Quote, Cause love is as strong as death and jealousy as terrible as hell. End quote. The Song of Songs 8.6 Therefore, it is not easy to explain the phenomenon of joyous abstinence to the unfaithful who cannot accept the work of the Holy Spirit in man. They don't understand how this works. The ascetic has the organic and psychological formation of any other man, so he is vulnerable, but he is protected as if under a bell by the gift of the spirit. All his struggles are meant to prevent the repelling of the gift once he has earned it. More precisely, the struggles have as their target humility, which God shall not persecute. Psalm 50 verse 18. That is, he will not forsake the state of kenosis, emptying and purification, which God comes to dwell in to restore in us the clean self of the first Adam. Sin does not belong to our true nature, but has entered it as a curse due to the fall. There has been implanted in us by God for the sake of the present life, subjected to death for the preservation of the humankind. St. John Chrysostom said that if death had not existed, marriage would not have been required either. However, this law is no longer valid for those who wish to live according to the first law of paradisical virginity into which we shall be reborn in the day of resurrection. But even if the mind understands these things, the body rebels following strictly their prescriptions of the curse. Quote, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh of law, the law of sin. Romans 7, verse 23 to 25. It looks like Sophocles has also felt the suffering endangered by his foreign law abiding in our body. Plato relates about this in his Re The Republic, quote, how well I remember the aged poet Sophocles when he answered to the question, how does love suit with age, Sophocles? Are you still the man you were? And the poet replied, peace, most gladly I escape the thing of which you speak. I feel as if I had escaped from a mad and furious master, end quote. Without being a Christian, the great poet has expressed in his way the latter statement of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, quote, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Romans 6.16 Defeating this law of the flesh has become possible only after the coming of Christ. In the Old Testament, virginity was impossible, since the chains of death were not broken and grace has not been poured abundantly, as it was at Pentecost, 50 days after Christ's resurrection, the first day of the establishment of the Church. Only by the power of this divine grace is the blessed virginity made possible, sheltered from any sickness and sorrow. And since, after Christ, History has counted millions of monks and nuns who have defeated nature, thing which had not happened from the beginning of the world until then. It becomes for us a reason to believe that the death and the resurrection of Christ are not a simple tale. But even in the name of Christ, oftentimes virginity fails many. This shows the difficulty of the struggle above nature. It shows that virginity has its own rules and is not given to anybody, but it is a precious gift bestowed together with many other virtues. In Palladius' Lawsic History, book of the 4th century monk, an example of incorrect abstinence is given, not sanctioned by God. Quote, Again, I knew a virgin in Jerusalem who wore sackcloth for six years and shut herself up in a cell, taking none of the things that bestow pleasure. In the end, she fell abandoned by God because of her excessive arrogance. She opened the window and admitted the man who waited on her and sinned with him because she had practiced asceticism not with a religious motive and for the love of God, but with human ostentation, which springs from vainglory and corrupt intention. For her thoughts being engrossed in condemning others, the guardian of her chastity was absent." End quote. The same fate awaits the monks, monastics that is, who despise women in marriage, the monks, as well as those who regard the laymen as second quality Christians. That's not to be thought. Anyway, these monks, if they do not correct through asceticism their conceptions, end up by leaving the monastery, becoming themselves like those laymen they used to despise, and most of them never return to Christ. Virginity is possible only accompanied by meekness and love, only in the serene search for the divine perfection where any sentimental disappointment and aversion for life have disappeared. Virginity is the fruit of an inner life of high intensity. It is the unsatisfied thirst for beauty and liberty it requires, according to St. John Chrysostom, a terrible energy and nerves of steel. The opinion that monasteries are full of misogynists, of impotents and fools who lacked food at home is just as ridiculous as it sounds. In the traditional monasteries, there is a synod of the elder monks who investigate the newcomer, and nobody who expresses such motives for the abandonment of the world is received in the flock. Much less is he tonsured a monk. Neither are received those with psychic problems, for in order to become a monk, much health is needed and psychic equilibrium in the first place. If virginity for its own sake would be worth something, then the suffering of the impotence and castrates could not be accounted for. It is said that Origen castrated himself in order to avoid this passion, but he only managed to worsen his suffering. P. 
Peace does not rest in our body, but in the hands of Christ. It's true that various sects split from the trunk of Christianity, which having a wrong understanding of the Savior's words, used to castrate themselves. People like these are rebuked by Paul the Apostle, who said, quote, I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off, end quote. Galatians 5.12, quote, when he says they made themselves eunuchs, he does not speak of cutting off their members, God forbid, but of cutting off their wicked thoughts. For the one who mutilates himself is cursed and on very good grounds. Such a man is a murderer. He makes it possible that God's creation be slandered, opens the mouths of the Manichians and commits the same lawlessness as the pagans who mutilate themselves. Cutting off one's members has been from the beginning the result of a demonic influence and of a satanic device, so that the work of God may be defamed and man may be marred, so that all weight would be cast on the nature of the members and not on free will." End quote. The monks are well aware that people need sexual relationships, for this desire is both good and bad, according to St. John Chrysostom. Quote, both anger and desire are built into the human nature, and both are useful to us. Desire in order to give birth to children and preserve the human race through these descendants." End quote. Spiritual fathers at monasteries know that monks, and even less strict with the canons than the ordinary priests, as they know what it means to fight a passion and how easy it is to fall. Quote, Once they brought a girl, having conceived to Abba Amonas, and they said to him, A certain one din did this thing, give them a penance, that is, punishment for his sin. But him, making the sign of the cross on her womb, ordered that she give some cheats, saying, For fear that going away she may give birth and will die, either her or the baby, and she may lack the necessary things for burial. But her accuser said, Why did you do that? Give them penance. But he said to them, you see, brothers, that she is close to death, and what can I do? And the elder let her go free and did not dare condemn anyone. End quote. Quote, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the fruits, first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. End quote. Romans 8, 22 to 23. Living for eternity and within eternity, the Orthodox ascetic is not lacking any of, its, of the enjoyments of the married life. He cannot either be considered a broken link in the chain of generations who does not leave offspring behind him. Living for a spiritual God with a spiritual universe, the monk gives birth spiritually to spiritual sons, preparing them for eternity. The number of spiritual sons a monk leaves behind exceeds by far the birth abilities of the biological parents, for the monks not only give birth to hundreds and thousands of spiritual sons during their lifetime, but also after death. Answering the prayers of the faithful, they give not only spiritual birth, but by their intercessions before God, they open the womb of sterile women, literally engendering biological birth as well. Aside from all these, the fruits of abstinence can be seen by everyone. The monks show longevity, freshness at all times, spirituality, and peace. Elders like Father Cleopa, Arseni Papakciuch, and uh, Theof Theophilo Parenian of R Romania are always surrounded by crowds of young people, usually college students, coming to hear their words and to rejoice spiritually together. These elders are loved by these children these young, uh, young, young adults, uh, with the simple folk of the countryside and by the university professors. From them receive women beaten by their husbands, a comforting word. To them run children abandoned by their biological parents under their old epitrahilion, under their stole. Weep poor college student girls wounded by abortions, abused by their lovers. Although having renounced family life, they rebuild broken families bring children back to their parents, make peace between young couples. Thousands of pilgrims travel daily to see these happy abstinence. 
The sexual relationship is neither food nor air, without which human life is made impossible. It is not what the body is lacking, but the simple act through which God decided to preserve life on earth. Children live happily without sexual relationships, state we are advised to, make, to aim for by our Savior. This is the initial state of Adam and Eve. This is the state Orthodox monks try to reach by their way of life, opposing passionate thoughts which are the sole cause of every sickness and sorrow. Abstinence is what gives us the likeness of Christ, of God, and therefore it gives those who practice it the sense of a higher nobility. Abstinence, for Christ, do this of their own free will. They are not forced by circumstances, and therefore they cannot be compared with the frustrated Freudians. They had the replacement option. They knew from practice what it means to exist, to exit time and step into eternity. These are the happy humans who managed to believe Christ more than Freud. They are those who jumped off the torture bed of the Jewish doctor, Freud that is, and tried to see and to live otherwise, thing which they managed to do for the last 2,000 years. We know that abstinence goes against nature, namely the fallen nature. Therefore, practicing it means raising ourselves above these laws of nature, having true power. Many break their necks in this cosmological battle. Many go down like exhausted birds in their trip to the warm countries. Many, however, come out as winners. This is the mysterious faith of the Christians who compare in this virtue with the billions of virginal angels. However, all these are only possible in the space of Christ where no sexually impure can enter. Corinthians 1, 6, 9. Where the pulleys of the nat natural laws get stuck by the hidden work of the Holy Spirit. On the other side remain fear and death. This is on Orthodox Path. I'll leave a link below for you for this.